Hey everybody, it's Ravi from Guys from Gratitude and my dear friend, Nicole Schoen. Hi, Nicole. Hello. It's been a minute since we've done one of these and I'm excited mm. to come on. I, every time we talk, I'm like, why don't we just record our conversations? But just, we're just catching up because there's always so much good stuff there. So mm. I'm, I'm glad that we could record another podcast today together. Thank you so much. I'm also excited about some of the things we have coming up. This is um, tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry, that's my puppy you might hear in the background. Um, <laughs> this is for March 2023 for those who are coming in later. But Nicole and I are doing an Angel Answers online gallery reading on April 12th. And that's where we'll be sharing messages from the Archangels for up to 10 participants. I think there's a couple of, of uh, spaces left for that. And then on April 25th, we're doing the Meet the Archangels workshop again. So I'm really excited about those two events. Um, oh, me too. Love yeah. it. <laughs> It'll be great. Yeah. So today, we just, just we just thought we'd come on and just have a conversation about things that we've been thinking about and share information that we've been kind of picking up and experiencing on our own journey and um, seeing, you know, when we're sharing our messages, it seems like it's resonating with people. So it seems like it's the energy out there in the world. So Nicole, why don't you share a few things that have been going on with you? Yeah, well, I know we talked a little bit um, just earlier before we started just about like living consciously, uh, living like on purpose, just, you know, with a, awareness. And that really does seem what's been coming up for me a lot um, with my clients and the people I'm seeing and in my, you know, with myself, it's just uh, really being aware of who you are, what's going on in your body, what's being mirrored around you, just really standing in who you are and just knowing who you are, I guess, in a different way, accepting that in a different way, but paying attention, things that come up in my body, what could they be attached to emotionally? If I'm watching things happening over and over again around me, what is the message there? Where is the lesson? What do I need to learn? And just really, once we start paying attention, uh, you know, I said before, crazy is always the loudest voice, you know, and we think about that even outside, like social media or whatever, who is the loudest, right? yes. but it's the same way with, um, you know, our soul whispers, the angels whisper. So can we quiet ourselves enough to, to pay attention and to listen and to see what's going on? around absolutely us. and you know for me this week i pulled archangel haniel to be with us so she is telling us she's the high priestess as well as the moon card and it's all about that looking inside for the answers and trusting that trusting that inner wisdom and knowledge that you have as you go through these things so it's not about the outward and listening to other people, but really, truly going inside, finding that time, that place of stillness and peace to go inside for the answers that are true to you. So you can then follow your heart. So that totally resonates with the energy of what you're talking about. You know, Haniel helps us to honor those feelings that come up and, and especially things that we might not want to look at, but she requires us to kind of go dig deep so we can gain the insights yeah. that we need from those moments and then move forward, you know, be able to yeah. really process things that we might've been holding on to for so, so long. I love Hanayo for that. She's just like that light in the darkness reveals those things to us. And, and yeah, the card that I had pulled was, was a, a Colette bearing reads it's bearing fruit, but it was that tree. And it really, it was a Hanayo kind of energy. It was realizing how we, who we are fully and how we got to be the things that we've withstood, the storms that we have withstood, that we've grown anyway, the ancestor heritage, the things that we've been through at times being naked, at times feeling beautiful, letting go. Like there's just so many things that parallel us with a tree and with the cycles of the moon and earth that we can learn from that really are. And it was just feeling just how strong we are and how much we've been through and how resilient we are. There's just so much fear out there. It just can be overwhelming. And so this was to go within and, and see through that, see past that to, you know, what really is real. Absolutely. And, you know, you and I were talking earlier today is actually the new moon in Aries. So, and that's the beginning of the lunar new year. 
So it's time to not only set your intentions for the month, but for the year ahead. And that's the thing, being able to see those things clearly that we really truly desire that we want to come into our life. And in order to do that, you have to remove the fear and doubt and that sense of not being worthy of having those things come into your life. Yeah. And so, um, I, you know, again, everything is just kind of coming together <laughs> at, yeah. at, in this message. And because Aries is the new moon that we're working with, Aries brings in courage and determination. And it takes courage to look at those darker places in our life. And so I love that you mentioned Hani El can shed light on that. The light of the moon can just bring in that, you know, that beautiful light and clarity that we need to see these things so we can then look at them, process them and move on, have more capacity for the things we need to bring in. Also, I do just want to say it's, it's so important, as you said, to, you know, really know what we want to manifest and know that our dreams are possible, but even more so, I think there's so many people that just don't know what that is. Like, what is that next step? What, or they think they don't, I think our soul always knows, but if we're not giving ourselves permission to dream the dream or to believe it's possible, we shut that down right away. And then we're in this state of, I don't know where to go. I don't know what would make me happy or what I want. So just encouraging people to know that it's all possible and just to let yourself really dream. And it's okay not to know where you want to go. I I was going to talk about gratitude and the, and the importance of gratitude and the, and the whole process of manifestation to be grateful for the things that you have, and then look at what brings you joy through that process of gratitude, look at what's bringing you joy. So you can then be attracted to that. And you might not know what needs to come in next, but you can just ask your spirit partners and, and the angels to bring you what you need for the next step forward. You might've heard people say, as they're, as they're going through the process, if they don't know exactly what they want, they say, I want whatever's for my highest good, you know, or if you have a specific thing that you're looking for. So say you're trying to um, go on a vacation, you know, like, mm-hmm. or, or something you say, you can, if you think that this is what you want, you can say, I, I would like for this or something better, you know, yeah. whatever is for my highest good. So yeah. you can, you can leave it to the angels. And that's part of the process too, is surrendering surrendering control. That doesn't mean that you don't have to be an active participant, but you have, but you aren't going to be able to control every aspect of this because much like that movie I was mentioning to you earlier, the, the, um, the cute Mrs. Harris goes to Paris movie. You might not know how things are going to come in and that's okay. Just trust that you're receiving what you need in that moment. And it's going to take you where you need to go. Things might fall apart in the process and that's fine. It's hard, but it's fine because it's going to let you ultimately get what you need. That's yeah. really for your highest purpose. Falling together. Yeah. <laughs> right. and, and I encourage you, if you haven't seen that movie, Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, it's on Amazon Prime. It is so amazing. It literally is the manifestation process and, the, and the, the, a beautiful story about seeing this in action. So I, I would encourage everybody to watch that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to check that out. I love it. That's yeah. what we need. We need more things like that. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just funny how I posted a couple of videos recently about signs and reminders. And that was just another sign yeah. that I got. Because I've been, I've been doing this moonology class with Yasmin Boland. And that it literally went through the entire process in that movie which wow. was amazing. It was yeah. amazing to watch and to, to experience that and be able to recognize it. So, yeah. you know, our spirit partners give us signs and, and reminders and messages all the time, but sometimes you'd have to stop in order to be able to see it. To see it. So, yeah. you know, and usually I, when we're on the right path, right. That's when I feel like the most signs are coming through. Yeah. You know? So yeah. That's because really we're good. open to them. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And even just calling in, if you don't know what you want to manifest, the feeling you want. Yes. I want more joy. I want more peace. I want more freedom, whatever that is. You know, I I think that, and then just trusting that the angels are going to bring it. Absolutely. Whatever form. That's the way Yasmin defines the new moon period, which is where you're sending your intentions and wishes out into the world is first connect with gratitude. So Mm -hmm. you can open up your heart to 
that space. And that's something that anybody that's ever had a session with me, know that's what we do. We, we have my grounded through gratitude practice that we start calling the angels, pulling the grounded energy, and then open our hearts through gratitude to connect with our spirit partners. And that is, that's how I would begin any kind of new moon ritual or ceremony that I do as well. So we can open up that, you know, connect with that energy of gratitude so we can then draw it back to us. You know, so nothing raises our vibration like that, like gratitude, right? And whatever we focus on is what we are creating. If we're really focused on fear or something we're afraid of, we are creating more of that. We're bringing more of that into our lives. So if we could just stop and get ourselves into that gratitude, it changes the whole energy field around us. It changes what we're calling in. It's just, it really is such a beautiful practice. Exactly. I'm glad you talked about fear and doubt, worry, because that's part of being human. It's natural. One thing that you and I talked about earlier is just like living consciously and living in awareness and having the awareness of the cycles that you might go through. And that's one thing I really love about this moonology class I'm taking is that it teaches you those cycles and how to work with the moon. So now is the new moon is about release, you know, releasing those intentions out into the world. And then you go into the quarter moons, which kind of, maybe you have some challenges that, you you know, things might not be working out the way you thought they would be, or, you know, should be, you know, I don't like the word should, but um, you might not see the progress that you're expecting. You might need to change your goals a little bit, your wishes a little bit. So, so you, you can work with them, but also it's about releasing and surrendering that control of how you think things need to be and allow them to be, allow divine wisdom to come through and let you (laughs) give you the messages and signs of realizing you're receiving what you need to in that moment. So it's it's surrendering. And that's part of this new moon process is at the end, you surrender it to the divine and let them take the reins. That doesn't mean you can't, you're not an active participant because you have to be an active participant in this process, but it's, it's just the control aspect. Yeah. (laughs) My father used to say to me when, when I was a little girl, I remember he used to say the one constant life's one constant is change. Mm-hmm. And when I was so little, I didn't even know what that meant, but I didn't like it. Yeah, <laughs> but exactly. it's like our human yeah. nature to want to try to control things. And we really have no control over yeah. so many things, but we do have control over, you know, where we put our mind and our focus, you know, and, and how we re- are, react and all of that. The more we can be in our awareness and, and slow down and, 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 you know, to hear and really see what's going on around us, the more easily we react, you yes. know, the bet to anything. And get out of our own way. Absolutely. Oh, we're in our, I mean, I am definitely the biggest person in my way. <laughs> for sure. I did a reading for someone the other day and, and I pulled the get out of your own way card and she acted like she had no idea why. <laughs> that came up. And as we progressed through the reading, I was like, kept referring back to it. I was like, see, this is what they're talking about. You just, you just described a situation where it would be helpful if you just allowed things to happen instead of stopping things from happening. She's like, yeah. I mean, that's the example of when we're in it, it's just so close to our nose that we can't see beyond. So we don't even see what's really happening until we can step back. Exactly. So gaining that perspective and that, and again, that's that Haniel energy is giving you the perspective of what's going on, your innermost thoughts and feelings and the depths of your soul. Yeah. So you have the truth so you can follow your heart to what it is that you want. Yeah. So absolutely. Back to Haniel this week. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Just, she just shines the light. Right. And that there's, even in the darkness, even in the darkest part of us, the only thing that that needs is light. That's yeah. all it is. So allowing that light to be shined within those places, there's no hiding. There's no bad parts of ourselves. There's nothing that isn't forgiven or just shining that light. So we can, we, we can put love in those places that forgot it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Emmanuel talks about light replacing the darkness and, and, you know, the darkness is fear and doubt and worry. And I know Kyle says that wherever there is, you know, love, which is light, mm. there can be darkness. And yeah. you know, my so, favorite mantra that he says, I love that. Right. I am the keeper it. of my mind and body where there is light. Uh, no, where there is love, right. Fear yeah. is a stranger. Yes. Yeah. Love, is, love here. is here. Yeah. yeah. I love that. 
I have it on a keychain. Oh, you do? <laughs> I did. Uh, I had it right on there. That's a great thing to talk about. Having those little affirmations, and you can make affirmations about your wishes too, where you're where you're emotionally connected to them, you know, and and really embodying what you want to bring in. But I love before we started our our podcast, I lit a white candle to call in spirit. I have my spirit spray from my friends up at Shaman's Dawn. And if you don't know them, you can buy their sprays online or a lot of metaphysical bookstores. But, um, you know, my spirit spray to call in spirit to be with us to share whatever it is we were supposed to today. Um, Those little rituals you can bring in to your daily practice or your manifestation practice, your new moon, you know, working with the new moon. So I love that you have a keychain that has the affirmation on it to remind you of that as you, you know, go get in your car and go drive or, yeah. or whatever it is. You know, yeah, we I, learn things and then life is just distracting, yeah. right? We learn things and, and then we forget where we forget to hold them. This, these are just little things that keep us, you know, just bring us back. It's like Absolutely. every time I see that, there it is. Yeah. I mean, I have this, I shared it in the video earlier, have faith mm. in your journey. Yeah. You know, oh, I love that. It's just right here on my little altar on my computer where I do my readings and, yeah. and at my sessions, because it's just something that I need to remember as I go through my day. And, um, but it, it came through this morning, you know, in a message to share that. So, but yeah. it's those beautiful things that, that you can connect with to just remind you of what you already know yeah. to, and to support you as you go, as you move forward, you know? It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it's too many of us are like, there's either we don't feel like we're doing enough, right? right? Because we're not enough. It's never enough. We we should be doing more. And and that is just so much pressure that we put on ourselves. And I think that, you know, I think the universe is like, we don't have that kind of plan for you. Your soul is really ambitious, but we just want you to be in joy and to allow the unfolding. And there's that worthiness part that if we're really wanting to manifest our dreams and, and live the life we want, we have to believe that we are worthy and we all are, yes. you know, and that's just something that if you need a reminder, put it on your mirror. <laughs> <Something>. <laughs> well, you know. I love that you mentioned that because part of this Aries moon, even though it's fire and driven, you know, energy moving forward and stuff, part of the Aries new moon is a reminder that we don't have to work so hard Mm. and that we're supposed to connect with pleasure and joy and things that bring us happiness too. So if you can intermingle your wishes and intentions with things that will truly bring you happiness through that, you're automatically going to help others. So just like that, the movie, going back to the movie again, um, by her just living this dream and pursuing her dream, she helped so many people through that process. And she might not even know all of the people she reached. And that's how we are when we are living our joy and our truth and following our dreams. You might not know all of the people that you touch along the way. Yeah, absolutely. It's like that little cartoon you see, you know, where the the one little cartoon is lit up and then they're in a group of people and the light starts moving out. It's like other people feel that energy It's contagious. It all starts within. We all just need to light up ourselves and we will be helping everyone else in doing yeah. that. I used to get really upset, but there was that um, saying that you can't really love someone if you don't love yourself or you can't give to others what you don't give yourself. And I used to, I really, it bothered me because I didn't feel that was true. I feel uh, I deeply love others and I don't always love myself the way I should. So I kind of pooped it off. I was like, that's not true. <laughs> and recently something came up in a meditation and in a, in a, in a, um, a private session with someone else. And it was the biggest epiphany. And it was what they're always saying. Like you can't give to others what you don't give to yourself. It's just, if there's something stopping you, like if I, if I'm, unable to really show the love that I want to show to you or, or go there in, in a deeper connected way. It's because I'm disconnected from myself, you know, and I'm not showing myself that love. So I do see, I do believe it all comes back to, you know, what, what's inside of us. It's not as, you know, maybe at that time I wasn't willing to see it, or maybe it was just said to black and white yeah. because I know that I can truly love, but really, I mean, I think that so many of us have grown up and we have, um, inherited this, this martyr, this, we have to do, 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 
you know, it's never enough. It's okay to work yourself to death. Like it, it's a different mentality now that work doesn't have to be hard, that it can be fun, that it can be enjoyable, that we, we, we can be taken care of and, and that it's okay to love ourselves and that it's okay to say no to something if we don't want to do it or to honor what we want before it was really, a lot of us were just taught, you have to do the thing. You yeah. have to show up, even if it's not, you know, serving you. So I I see that differently now. And I think it just goes back to really looking within and honoring and loving yourself fully. And and then, and then it's reflected back to you in different ways. It goes back to seeing the angel in ourselves. Like that's how our angels and guides, they see us as pure love, which is what they, how we see them, but they see us in the same light. And so that's how they want us to see ourselves. And it goes back to the same thing. It's just like, when you can begin to accept your humanness, forgiving yourself for mistakes that you've made along the way. And, you know, that's part of the human experience is to learn the lessons that, that, you know, as you go through life, but know that we are made from God, God made us and we are divine. We are as of God. And so that's how our angels and guides see us. And that's how they want us to see ourselves. So when you can begin to see yourself with love, then others will see you as love. It's hard to do. It's hard to have these experiences. And that's where the forgiveness process comes in. (laughs) So you have the new moon, which is all about sending out the wishes and intentions and the full moon, which is all about releasing forgiveness, uh, surrender, you know, in the deepest levels. And Haniel can help us with all of that. She can help uncover our deepest dreams and desires, as well as help us release our deepest fears and worries and doubts things that we feel like we need to forgive ourselves for. Yeah. And I love that you brought up Shamuel too, because I think he's really great to work with, with Hanael with this, because Mm -hmm. he really helps us to see through the eyes of love, to see, to see through, you know, with our hearts, like Mm -hmm. that, that whole connection of what we see and really looking deep inside the heart. I think that they're just such a great combo for this to really see things clearly. She's already bringing the light. So now it's like, are you really willing to see yourself and accept this? Yeah. as truth you know yeah and and then i i just in my head heard an azrael for comfort if anybody oh, said, if this is making anybody feel really uncomfortable call on azrael to bring in that wrapper that that soft you know cozy blanket to yeah. wrap yourself in as you as you go through this process because so you know it can be very uncomfortable especially when you're looking at, at these things that you might not want to Yeah. I don't know about you, but I feel the angels have been so prevalent. Like, I mean, I've been working with them and studying them for years. So, you know, for some years now, so they've always been a part of my life, but there's something that has shifted within the last, you know, I don't know, six months or something. I feel them not just around me and what I'm doing or in my, with my immediate clients, like I can feel them really surrounding all of us. I I was going to say, it's within you, like, and Mm -hmm. you're attracting the people who want to do the work. And that's what Mm -hmm. I love, you know, like we're, we're doing, we've, this, I think is a second meet Mm -hmm. the archangel workshop we're doing together. And I love that we can bring people into working with the archangels in their everyday life and connect with them and call them in to help. You don't have to know their names. You don't have to know what they do. Just call in the angels for support. And that's yeah. enough. Just, just say, I'm open. Them. I'm open to all of your help, yep. you know, today and, and just trust that they will come. You don't have to exactly. know anything about them. They don't have egos like we do. I like to say they don't care what you call them as long as you call them. So just call on the angels to support you in your everyday life. And that's why I, I really feel this um, concept and idea of living consciously, making choices that are going to support your personal growth will only lead to bringing in joy and happiness and what you need to support that next step forward. You know, I- I, Living um, on purpose, right? It's like living a life with purpose, but on purpose. We're doing this. With focused intention and energy behind it. And then there's time to rest too. It's it's a cycle, you know? So you go, you move forward, you you, you move forward and then you might, you need to rest and review and then you move forward and then you rest and review and mm-hmm. see what's working, what's not. And it's that evaluation process that makes us live consciously. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I love, I love that you were saying about the moon, all of the things about the moon. And it 
for me, it's something that helps me to stay conscious and stay, stay focused, but also on a bigger meaning. I just, I mean, I'm cancer, so I'm a moon child. So yeah. you know, I, I love the moon, but um, it's like honoring all the seasons of your life, yeah. right? Like all of it. I, when I look at the, you know, those little, the, all the moon phases, it's just like, there are so many different seasons. There's so many different phases. Why do we shun some of them? Why are we like, you know, just really honoring all of that, um, yeah. back to childhood, every single part and loving every single part, honoring every single part. And then, you know, where we're going from there is, you know, I don't know, on purpose, it's different, you know, yeah. there's a different focus. So I love that you mentioned childhood because I, I hadn't, hadn't talked about this yet, but you know, today again is the Aries new moon and Aries is all about that inner child. And, mm. and that's why, that's why the part about connecting with joy and, and not working all the time, you know, being playful, that playful energy can enter into this, in this time, I but that's that. also the first day of spring. Aries new moon ushers in the, the spring time too. So I, it's just reconnecting with that vibrant energy of spring and rebirth and new mm-hmm. life. And, and so that's why this is the lunar new year, the first moon of the new year and setting the intentions for your year ahead is so important. If you do it now, you'll go through the entire cycle of the year through that whole mm-hmm. process of what you were talking about. That's so neat. And I love, I think we forget the power of joy. So I love that this is about that. I mean, how many times have you manifested something willy nilly and silly just because out of fun, you're like, okay, I want this. And then all of a sudden it happens because there's no attachment to it. We did it out of pure joy, not like, oh, I really, really want this thing. Not hoping it was just fun. And then, you know, so we need to do that for the bigger things, you know, but doing it out of that, out of joy. Don't have attachment to it. You mm-hmm. surrender. You just put out that wish and, that and it. surrendered it. It's like you just trusted. Okay, this is. I'd love to. Have, you know, this is something I'd love to have. And you could embody the silliness of it. You could embody and feel the emotions and have that emotional connection and see yourself doing it. And then it just happened. We hold on to things so tight. We ha- we have these big dreams and, but we hold on to it too tight. We don't give it breath to grow and Absolutely. live. And, and sometimes we hold on to dreams that no longer fit us anymore. Yes. Sometimes they're old dreams that we're not willing to let go because we wanted them so bad at one time, but realizing that we've outgrown them or that they've been answered already and it's time yeah. to move on to something else. So it's that attachments piece is so important. Yeah. And that's part of the review and release part of the mm-hmm. moon cycle. Yeah. And if anybody's interested in, in doing this kind of work, you can come and join my study group and learn more at robbykearns.com. We're going to be playing around with this more really focused, intentional living, conscious, conscious living, and looking at the archangel for the month that's associated with the house and moon that's going on. And and, um, you know, learning about the archangel, learning about the cycle of the moon, what, how to work with that, um, energy techniques to, to help, you know, if we're in a period of tension, how to release that tension, because we all feel it. So let's recognize that and work with it instead of just holding on to it and going, I'm stuck. So that's I what this that. is about. That sounds so powerful. That sounds amazing <laughs> that you're doing that. I love it. And on top of that, I think another thing that is so huge and in, in helping people just grow and and manifest is, is community. Mm -hmm. So you doing a study group like that, like the the power in those numbers of you all coming together and, and having these focused intentions is just, it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I am, I feel very, very fortunate to have such amazing people part of the study group, as well as the, the larger guidance from gratitude community. And I am going to start doing more stuff there. Um, and, but I, I've just been, I'm waiting for the platform to get a little more um, stable yeah. <laughs> so I can do things there. It's, you can sign up for that at, at robbykearns.com. Uh, I think it's slash community or join the community. If you just go to the homepage of my website, you'll find it there. But yeah, I, I'd love for y'all to join us. That's free. You can make a donation if you want to, but it's free. I want it as a free resource. I, I created it because I didn't find that outside of classes. Mm. And I wanted people to feel supported as they went through their journey. Uh, it's like really important. I, I, um, when I started, I felt really alone and I didn't, didn't know where I could go to kind of have this kind of broader view of spirituality. And then 
and like sprinkle in modalities here and there. And, you know, mm-hmm. other people know about other modalities that they share. It's not all about me and what I'm, what I'm teaching. I bring in other people. I, you come in and talk to the group and. Yeah. Oh, uh, you, you create an amazing people. space and, so. and it's your light. It's your light, your love, your intention. Robbie, you're so generous oh. with your, with your time, your energy, your love. Like you really put it out there and, and you can feel that even in an online space, you can feel oh. that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But same, yeah. I, you know, I feel the same way about you. I, I saw you in, I don't, I think it was Kyle's group, which had probably a thousand people on the Zoom. And I'm like, I need to be her friend. Oh, <laughs> we need to, we I need to know that. each other. <laughs> and I can, and yeah, there's you know, a reason. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I, I feel fortunate that I found these amazing people through my journey. Well, thank you, Nicole. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you coming on and having this conversation with me. And you know, we said, we're just going to have a general conversation. And it ended up being a, a lot of Haniel, which I love. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I love these conversations. They feed my soul. They really yeah. do. And if it's still April of 2023, I hope that y'all will consider coming to our workshop um, on the 25th of April, Meet the Archangels. We're going to go through you know, some of the, the more known archangels like Michael and Gabriel and Ariel and, and, um, but then also talk more in detail about some others like Sandalfon that you might not know about. He's, he's wonderful, you know, sends our prayers to heaven and brings back exactly what we need. And um, some others, Raziel, Raguel, and whoever we, we want to talk about, really. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's just a joy to introduce people to the archangels and have them experience that energy. And um, so... We hope that you can join us for that. Yeah, absolutely. It's so cool to hear the feedback, right? Like you're just introducing, we say you don't need to know who they are, which you don't. But when you specifically are calling in a certain, you feel that energy and there's people are getting back to us after and saying, I asked for this thing. And then this happened. Can you believe it? So they're seeing those miracles like right away, which is so neat. And it's neat to, to share all that, you know? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Nicole, thank you again for yes. being my partner in these podcasts and yeah. uh, for for your your light into the world. I hope you know how appreciated you are and how much you help others. Uh, and Nicole, if you if you want to schedule a session with Nicole, your website is I am Nicole Showen. Yes, exactly. yeah. I'll put it in the in the little description. She's an amazing energy worker and intuitive. Um, you know, she does card readings and intuitive readings. So please, 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 you know, reach out to her for, for a session. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to see you at an event or a session or something soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for spending your time with us in our podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it and learned some new information about archangels and manifesting and the new moon cycle. Hope that you'll come back and join us for more podcasts. If you did enjoy it, please share with your friends. We'd love for you to do that. You can also join our community at robbiekearns.com slash community robbiekearns.com slash community. If you're interested in scheduling a private session or learning about our workshops, you can also find that at robbiekearns.com. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day.